All right, I'm Lenny McGill. This is the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop, and this is part two of the disassembly reassembly of the new Gen 5, and I'm working on a Glock 17, Gen 5 17. And I've already done uh, the complete uh, disassembly reassembly of the upper. This is part two of the lower. So we're going to go ahead and take a, a gander at the lower. Uh, like I said, the uh, one difference here that's significant is there's only one pin above the trigger. So it's really a two pin gun, kind of like the original Glock Gen 1 had one pin. So um, for whatever reason, you know, Glock thought, hey, I, you know, it's fine. Now, you know, a couple things in my mind, you know, the locking block is actually keyed into the frame, into the plastic. And when I say keyed, it means that it's actually tilted a little bit, so it's not going to come out of itself, and it does give itself some kind of uh, structural uh, integrity because of it being keyed like that. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, too, and, and a lot of people don't know this, uh, because people say, well, it's a plastic frame. Well, you know, they get all worried about that. But, you know, the, um, the rail system right here actually is a, uh, a horseshoe shape piece of steel that gets overmolded with plastic. So this rail actually comes all the way under and all the way back up. So uh, there is metal inside the frame itself. The rails aren't just placed in there. That's actually one piece of metal. So it does have a lot of integrity. There's a big, heavy locking block here. And that pin just serves really to keep it there. It does give a little bit of structural integrity uh, this way. Uh, usually, you know, you're always looking for the up, down, and sideways. That's the where we're, you know, we're looking for uh, integrity. And, and the slide itself being on top of this whole thing also gives it that integrity side to side because the slide's a piece of steel and it's not going to allow this thing to collapse. So uh, all, all that said, you know, the one pin, uh, you know, I'm not quite sure why they went back to that, but they did. And uh, Glock is a lot smarter than I am. So uh, let's go ahead and do the, uh, the assembly. Uh, so we got to take the one pin out. And a lot of you are going to struggle with that pin because you're not quite understanding what's going on. So the pin, as um, uh, as it sits in there, is kind of captured, I'm going to use that word, uh, by the slide stop lever. So the slide stop lever is also intersecting that pin. So if you see the slide stop lever, and, and what's different about this slide stop lever is that it's a U shape or a horseshoe shape here because it's on both sides. So it is captured by this pin, and the pin is captured by it. There's a spring there, okay? So there's a big hole in the um, uh, uh, slide stop lever, which we'll show you. But there's also a spring there that is actually pushing up on the slide stop lever inside there that is actually intersecting with a notch on the pin. So there's a notch there. I'm using this one as a reference point. This is not the right pin, but it's the same concept. So this round hole of the slide stop lever is actually captured around that and pushing up and locking that in place. So it's, it's caught on that lip of that rim. So when you try to just push that pin out without manipulating the slide stop lever, you're really fighting against that. It's a steel on steel and you know, you can bang it out, but it's so much an easier way. And the easier way is just to you know, take your punch. And again, this is my, uh, my favorite punch set. Let's see, is that the right one? Yeah, that could work or this one could work. Uh, I think I'm gonna use this guy though. And so then I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna manipulate this up a little bit and it usually comes right out. So uh, I'm gonna pull this guy up and, 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 and give it a little bit of pressure back and forth and then I can usually just push it straight out just like that. So I just lifted it up a little bit, not too much because I don't want it to be caught on the other side of the lip. So I kind of bring it up to the middle position and just slightly wiggle it back and forth so it, it, it finds itself off the lip. And then I just push the pin straight through. And you'll notice I'm using my uh, expensive uh, gunsmithing uh, uh, bench tool here. A little bit of uh, uh, duct tape, in a sense, uh, painter's tape, uh, to capture the pin, also to give me a surface on which to work so the pin can go through. And there's the pin halfway through, right there. I'm just going to pull it out and drop it into the, uh, the bucket. You know? So now that's, that's basically it. You know, it used to be you'd have to take the locking block pin out, but that's, that's it. So now let's go ahead and lift off the actual locking block itself. And I can do that just by prying it straight up. Come straight up like so. And you're gonna notice the, um, the hole in which it goes through. Of note, you'll see that they still have a channel for another pin in the locking block. It's like, wow, that's interesting. 
Okay, do they plan to add that? Maybe that's for 40 caliber at some point. Who knows what's going on with that thing? But they, you know, that's where the locking block pin would basically go, but they don't have it here. They have the two holes right there, and that's how your pin basically intersects with that device. So that's the locking block. Put that down. Uh, next up, I'm going to go ahead and take out my slide stop. It's the ambidextrous slide stop. It's just going to lift straight out, I believe, unless I've got to take my trigger out first here. And nope, it comes right out. All right, here's what I wanted to show you. There's the two pins, or two holes, excuse me, in which my pin goes through like, like such. So it captures the locking block, and it captures the slide stop lever like so. There's the spring I was talking about. So that spring actually, you know, kind of gives it a little bit of spring pressure up and down. And that, what I was trying to uh, uh, show you is that the, the, um, uh, the notch gets caught on that thing. Now, let me get the actual pin here, and I'll show you for sure. The notch gets caught in here, and it can actually interfere with taking this thing out and in. So if I press up, it's going to be hard to take out. But all I'm doing is I'm just lifting this up a little bit and pushing forward to, to reduce the pressure off that notch. It's a very slight notch, but it does make a difference. All right, so that goes there, and that is the uh, that is a truly ambidextrous slide stop lever or slide release lever. Ambidextrous in a sense, you can use it right or left handed, either way. So even you righties out there could actually come up with your with your index finger and click it up if you wanted to, just like all the lefties have been doing for years. All right, uh, that being said, now we can take our trigger housing pin out. And for that, I'm going to grab my, uh, my skinny punch. And uh, this one, I'll use the hammer as well. So uh, you'll notice I'm taking my pins out from the left to right, just kind of an old uh, habit. An old gunsmith told me that's how you do it. This is my hammer. You can see it's got a, a steel tip. It's also got a nylon tip, which makes it really uh, nice to put these pins back in place. But right now, I'm going to go steel on steel. And this is, comes out fairly simply, as you see. And there's the pin. This is a plastic pin, or should I say polymer pin? Okay. They'll be happier at Glock. About that. So I'll pull out the whole trigger assembly. Okay, there comes the trigger assembly, of which consists a trigger bar, trigger housing. That's what's called the ejector. Kind of a unique shape in the Gen 5. A little different than the... Uh, uh, the Gen 4, so as you Gen 4, Gen 3 too. And then uh, you're also going to notice how the trigger bar intersects with the trigger return spring or the trigger spring, which lives inside here. Okay. Notice that it is basically a little stirrup almost that captures the bar. So uh, the connector is the same, by the way. So you can use our double diamond three and a half pound connector to get a better trigger pull in the Gen 5. That's a good thing because we have those ready now. To pull this off of the bar, I'm going to pull forward a little bit. Notice how spring-loaded. To pull the bar off of the trigger housing, I'm going to pull forward, and then I'm going to twist it out. And here it comes. Now look how it's loaded there. I want to see you get in close. See how it's loaded up there in that little stirrup, because i got to put it back in there when I go to reassemble. All right? And there you see it drop down, which is always a pain. There's a the trigger bar. It's a little different than your uh, standard Gen 3, Gen 4 bars because it doesn't have the tail down here with a little hole in it that accepts the uh, uh, trigger spring. It is uh, lacking that piece because the, new, the trigger string now intersects with this uh, front uh, part of the cruciform, being the square back there, or the, the cross back there. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, I do want to show you, uh, you know, the three and a half pound connector is easily installed and uh, uh, you're basically going to go ahead and take your punch and just push the connector out from the other side. So it lives right there. And I can come over here and uh, just see if I can capture this guy right there and just push this thing out. Uh, I'm gonna, yep, just that easy. <laughs> okay, uh, a little bit of pressure there. So it is the connector, and that's a very important part because it releases the trigger bar. As you pull the trigger bar back, the trigger back, the trigger bar intersects with that, and then it falls based upon the angle of this piece right here. And this piece right here 
is what controls how far it has to come back before it drops off. The three and a half pound connector has a, a different angle and it has a, a lighter trigger pull because the angle's corrected. Okay, so that's your connector. That's your stock factory connector. Um, now, we can look inside here. I'm not going to take this apart because uh, no, you don't need to, and you shouldn't. And you typically are going to buy this unit as is, okay, with the spring already installed. Okay, but if you look inside here, you're going to notice it's kind of like a guide rod system. They have a bar, a plastic bar that runs this way. And... It captures, it has a spring captured around it, and on front of that is this little stirrup thing that we just talked about. And so this is spring loaded, basically right there. So that bar actually captures that and it allows the spring pressure back and forth. It's a plastic rod, so that's why I don't want to mess with it too much because, you know, this gun uh, hasn't had a whole lot of uh, action to it. I don't want to replace that part. And when you start playing with these plastic parts in and out, in and out, in and out a hundred times, it's going to need replacing, okay? So if I was to uh, take that out, you basically have to uh, push this guy forward and get that uh, piece right there to stick out of there, and then you slide it up to the top here. So it's not that hard. I did it the other day. And uh, let's see if I can, there it is right there. See it coming out? And I can slide that up to the top there. But I'm not going to do it here. So you can, that whole piece comes up. Ah, I'll just do it for you, what the heck. And there it comes out, and there it falls out by itself. So like I said, there's the plastic guide rod with a couple little steps on it there, or foot stills there sit on. There's the end of it. It captures a little piece there. Trigger bar goes into here, like so. Okay, and this piece kind of floats in uh, the, um, I mean, really just floats in here. And so now we'll go ahead and put it back through here. It floats in this trigger housing. So this is what I didn't want to do is fumble this thing on here, but I'll do it for you. So we're going to stick it back out here. And get it started with my finger and pull it down. It's hard to show you. Stick it out and pull it down. There you go. So I had to stick it through the hole, protrude it, and then pull it down, and it snaps into place here. And like I said, that piece kind of free rides in there based upon that one connection. And that's why I don't want to play with it too much. But now you know. All right, so that one's back together. Again, when you buy this trigger housing, it's pre-assembled. When you buy our pyramid trigger, it'll have a little lighter spring or a little heavier spring there to help return that, tr uh, that uh, 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 trigger better. That's what, you know, what we do with our pyramid trigger. We have a little heavier return spring. That's what that is. That spring returns the trigger back to its normal position. So it gives you a better reset. All right, so there you go, there you go, there you go. And last thing is the slide lock lever, also known as the takedown lever. You're going to want to learn how to do this because uh, this uh, allows us to um, uh, take the gun apart, but we have an extended version of that, which is much easier. It's longer here, so it's much easier in your fingers to actually grasp it. Uh, and again, it's precision versus a stamped part. Uh, keep in mind when you look at this, okay, there's two sides to it. There is a side with a, with a lip to it and a side that's smooth. The side with a lip to it is a side that comes back towards the shooter because the barrel locks up on that side right there. So it's important when you reassemble it that the side with a lip, and you can get in there with your finger and actually feel it, you know, feel it. It's not very big, but on the other side, it just slips right off. There's no lip there. It's a slight lip, and I'll show you that when I take it apart, but I just want to let you know that it goes back towards the shooter when you install it. And a lot of people have done it incorrectly. And it's not pretty because the slide just comes right off. <laughs> okay? All right, now, to disassemble this, it's not fun. It's captured by a little spring right here, a little coil spring. It used to be a leaf spring in the Gen 3 and Gen 4. It's a coil spring now that is in the middle. So to do this, what we have to do is we've got to push down and push out at the same time. So we can come in here with a bigger, fatter punch and push this guy down 
Let's see if I can come up here like so. So I keep my fingers out of the way. And then work it off that spring. It's not, like I said, it's not easy. It's a pain in the butt. And I don't know why they did it this way, but they did. And now let's see if I can actually do it like this. Okay, that's better. Yeah, okay. All right, so I've got it working off now. You can see I did. I pushed it down with my finger, came up here and pushed it through with a punch. And here it comes. I want to make sure that spring doesn't go flying away too. So I'm going to keep my, fi my finger over top of that hole. Here comes the slide lock. And there's that spring. And it just sits in there. There's no magic there. It'll fall out like so. There's the spring. And that, I understand, is a safety plunger spring. So it's the one part that's actually interchangeable. There's a hole in there where it fits. Make sure you center it up and sit it in that hole. Because we're going to put it right back together now. So it looks like it's in the right place. Here's the slide lock. And I mentioned to you that they're stamped. Well, I'm going to prove it to you right now. If you see how it sits there, if I push on the side, see how it lifts up? Because the one side, it's bowed. It actually has a bow to it. It's not a flat piece. And because of that, it's, it comes up. And because of that, it has less accuracy because it doesn't lock up the same place every time. We have a solution for that. It's our Precision Extended Slide Lock, also now available in Gen 5. The difference being... Same, everything's really the same as far as the way it looks, but um, the notch here is a little larger in the Gen 5 to accept that spring versus the small little notch that accepted a little uh, leaf spring. Okay? All right, to reassemble this, eh, it's a pain as well, but, you know, here we go. Remember, we're going to keep our notch to the rear, and there's a number there also that kind of tells you that that's where it goes. This is the smooth side. So let me show you that versus the notch side. Boom. And, you know, I might as well say, you know, by the way, here is your stripped frame, right? This is a, just a stripped frame. Now, there's one other thing in here that I forgot to take apart, and that is the actual um, uh, magazine button. And I do have my magazine disassembly tool right here, the magazine uh, catch tool. So uh, this is, uh, let's see if I can get a, a look inside here. Uh, righty, let's see, get some light in there. Let's just see. Where is it? Where is it? It's there you go. Are we looking in the right place? There you go. Okay. All right. You see that little V in there? Inside that V, and there's the spring right there. It resides a little roll pin. There's a spring. That's your magazine ex uh, release spring, mag release spring. It's just uh, captured in that V with friction. I mean, it just fits in a little hole. There's no magic there either. Very simple. To remove that pin, I'm going to go in there with my flathead screwdriver, and I'm just going to scoop it out. And when I say scoop it out, you'll see when I take the button out, uh, it will uh, show you how this thing resides in there and how it captures itself into that piece there. And uh, there we go. Let me show it to you again. Here I've got it over and above the piece right now. All right, let's see. There you go. See it? Then now I, now I just lifted it out of its little notch. I'm not going to take the spring out. I'm just going to go ahead and, and drift this guy out here. Let's see here. Here it comes. Well, I may have to take the spring out. Let's see here. Let's just see. I do not have my needle nose pliers. Well, okay. So in that case, I don't have my needle nose pliers. I don't need to take this thing out. Uh, you can see how it lives. What I want to do is go in there and grab that and pull that spring all the way out. And it comes out with needle nose pliers, but I don't have my needle nose pliers. So I'm going to continue on. You've seen it on other videos. Same concept. You pull that spring right out. The spring is just a little roll pin. It gets captured in the magazine button with the hole. So what I'm going to do now to reassemble this guy is to actually push it back over into that hole. And it's pretty simple. Just got to go in here, hold this still, put it over, and that's it. Now it's locked in place. 
So there it is. We're going to go back to where we started. And we're going to reassemble this frame. You can see the pin is now in place. All right. So again, flathead screwdriver is the way to go. That's the only way. You know, there's, uh, and again, uh, needle nose pliers, you can actually pull that spring out. It just is friction fit into the hole. Just want to make sure you push it all the way down. All right, to reassemble now, let's go ahead and do that. So we can go ahead and just look at all of our parts. Trigger bar and assembly is basically, it, it gets sold like that. Trigger bar and shoe assembled. Next piece is your uh, slide stop lever. It's the ambidextrous version, kind of the horseshoe shaped. Trigger housing has your spring inside of it, comes like that, sold like that. Locking block pin. Connector. This would be your slide lock lever. And finally, your actually pins themselves. Locking block. Locking block trigger pin, basically. And your trigger housing pin. And then, of course, the slide itself. And the two other parts in here. So really, it's pretty simple when you look at it. It's like one, two, three parts. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And if you counted the parts inside here, 12, 13, 14 parts to the lower. It's incredible. <laughs> and, you know, what's so amazingly light, I tell you. Nice job uh, on this gun, actually. I mean, I, I tell you what, it's, uh, you know, it's certainly... Um, a little different path uh, way for uh, Glock, in a sense, to have uh, some of these different things and, and kind of going back without the finger grooves. But I, I think, again, that was a requirement by the U.S. military and or the uh, FBI because a lot of people found the finger grooves got in the way. It didn't really fit their hand. And they thought it was uncomfortable. And, and we've done for many people what we call as our you know, grip uh, reduction where we remove the finger grooves. So it gives you, a, it gives you the option to have a smaller grip. Much like the Gen 5, it does come with the panels to get a larger grip as well. Let's go again and put this thing back together and uh, get this thing done here. First things first, we're going to go ahead and I want to assemble my trigger bar into my trigger housing. Remember I said this is a little tricky because now you got to go in here and you got to take that front part of the trigger cruciform or the cross in the back, that, that front piece, and see how it's dipped down just a little bit. kind of has a little nose dive to it because it wants to intersect and grab itself into that stirrup right there. And uh, let's see here, can you see it here? So I turn it this way, see that guy? So I wanna get this front part of that bar into there. And there it is, there's a good shot right there. So it's um, not easy, it's not hard, it's just something you gotta kinda angle in there. And sometimes you get it right away, and I think I got it right away, so. And now, let's see here. There you go. So that's what I'm looking for, for it to live like that. And you'll notice it has a little bit of pressure to it. All right. So it gets a little bit more complicated when you put your connector on. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the connector into its place. And you'll notice the connector goes right in a slot, orientates itself like so. It really only goes one way. You always want to make sure you don't bend it as you put it in. Just make sure you try to push from the side down here, the, the bottom. And, you know, it's supposed to have a little bit of space here. It is bent on purpose. It's a spring. It does go in and out that much. A lot of people say, oh, they, it's crooked. It's, it's not right. And it's supposed to be that way. Make sure you seat it all the way. And you'll see there's a, a little separation from the actual housing itself. And that's the action you're looking for. Right there. And that's what makes the gun actually function. I mean, as far as recycle itself. Okay, now I'm going to go back in and, and get my trigger bar set. And there we go. That was pretty easy. Uh, not bad. Uh, while we're here, I'm going to show you this is a, a lubrication point. Uh, it's very important. Uh, you're going to always, uh, you know, want to make sure that you have a little drop of oil right here. And I usually do that every time I shoot. And it'll roll itself down onto the bar. Just a drop. That's what's nice about this little pen oiler. It's got this little needle point applicator that allows you to put just a single drop where you want it. And uh, like I said, it'll migrate itself in onto that surface. You'll see that the trigger bar intersects with the connector right there. And that is basically a lot of your trigger motion. You feel that right there. That's the metal to metal contact. 
and that's the motion it goes. It gets pulled it's here, and it gets it comes here, and it comes back. It hits that bar and drops down. So it starts out here, hits the bar, drops down. When it drops down, it releases the firing pin lug from the rear tail, and the firing pin snaps forward, and bang. Then it repeats over and over again. All right, so there's your uh, lower uh, trigger assembly ready to go in. And there's my other pieces. So let's go ahead. First thing I'm going to do is drop the trigger bar into its place with the trigger housing. And that goes straight in. The trigger housing goes in there. Just want to kind of straighten your trigger out, make sure it gets set in there. And we press it all the way down. And you'll hear that click. You already heard the first click, so that was good. And it sits in there just like that. And it's all the way down. So the trigger bar goes in. You're going to go ahead and notice how we get that hole lined up there and how the, how the trigger bar will clear in that hole. Let me put some light back there so you can see that. And again, it's all about manipulating the trigger bar just to the point where you know that it's going to work. And once you get it in there, oh, there we go. That's it. You'll see my spring over here for my takedown lever. I'm about to put that in. Now, this is a little tricky, but uh, again, making sure that we have our notch to the rear. We're going to put it in here to the side. And notice what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of angle it up. I'm going to go up there and try to capture that spring and uh, put it down. So I'm going, to, I'm going to angle it up. I'm going to take a punch, push that spring down. There you go. Okay, so I'm using just a standard factory punch. I push the spring all the way down. Kind of then just push this in with my finger just to place it out of the way. And now it captured it, and that's a good sound. So you see how the spring found that notch and pushed back up. So we've got our slide lock lever in. We've got our trigger bar in. And now we're going to go ahead and drop our slide stop in, both sides, and push it down. It looks good. Looks good. Now if I hold it there, that's good. The holes line up so I'm on the right track. And now the locking block goes in right on top. And notice, again, that it's keyed. It's kind of at an angle. And so it's going to capture everything else in there. Now, the holes aren't quite lined up. So when I go to put my pin in, I'm going to press down on the trigger bar a little bit just to get them to line up. So I can see that there. So now let's pop this guy around the other side. And I can always reach in there and kind of clear everything up, make sure everything fits where it's supposed to be. Looks like it's good. And get my pin started. And here comes my nylon hammer comes into play. That's what's really nice about this. You can kind of beat on it and not interfere with anything there. And it looks like it's good, but I will say this. You see how it's a little bit um, off, uh, you know, from the edge there and a little bit farther on the edge there. So I'm going to take a pin and just press it over. And you may hear this slide stop snap into place. Let's see here. Get a little stronger punch here. And I think that little click is exactly what I was thinking about. So it just snapped into place. So now that that is anchored in the notch. So when the pin's out there like that, it's not quite in the notch. I mean, it'll still function, but you really want to anchor it. So there's my piece. Now, before I do anything else, I also want to make sure that it has the slide, you know, spring pressure I'm looking for. It comes up, goes down. Yep. Last piece is uh, my little uh, trigger housing pin. And this one... Just a plastic piece. It's all locked into place. So just tap it in. Again, use a punch just to true it up. Looks good on both sides. Got my spring pressure here for my takedown lever. Got my spring pressure on the slide stop lever. Everything else is gone and disappeared. And now I will put the slide back on. And again, we are in a fired position, right? Yes, we are. OK. Looks like it's ready to rock and roll. And it resets. Feels good. And that is the disassembly, reassembly of the Glock Gen 5 17. So we've got Glock 17 Gen 5s, Glock 19 Gen 5s for sale. If you want one, give us a call. We also do all the custom work too. So certainly go online if you're looking for custom parts. We have just about everything you need for the Glock Gen 5, just like we do for the Gen 4 and the Gen 3 as well. And, of course, we can cut and color and make this thing a truly custom gun 
based upon your specifications. I'm Lenny McGill. This is the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop here in San Diego, California. If you're ever down in Southern California, come down and see us. People drive down from Anaheim, from Disneyland all the time. They come down from Los Angeles all the time. They come down from Santa Bernardino all the time. This really is a spectacular place to stop. You can shoot and test drive the Gen 5. You can test drive our new custom builds that we have. We always have new builds in and out of there. You can order any of these things and have them shipped to your house and you can take pieces and parts at home uh, right from the store. We've got a great store, a lot of great people and a shooting range here too. So hope to see you here in Southern California. I'm Lenny McGill. Thanks for watching.